Hey everyone, today I want to share with you a flip that's also a major renovation and one of the most expensive flips I've ever done. I have seen my fair share of rundown houses before, but man, this one was one of the worst. Most of the big ticket items hadn't been touched for 20-30 years, and on top of that, there's a weird addition that makes the layout so funky. During the project, we had some challenges, and I'll tell you all about it in this episode. I'll share with you how I got this house, the before and after, the renovation process, the sale process, and the numbers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Alisa and I'm a house flipper in the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been flipping houses for three and a half years now and 2019 was my first seven-figure profit year. I want to use this channel to educate more people to get started in real estate investing and house flipping. So make sure you subscribe to learn more. Let's start from how I got this house. If you've seen my other videos before, you probably know that I get all of my deals from real estate agents. And this one is no exception. My agent knows the listing agent and I was their first call. The seller is being relocated out of state for work and his company is paying for all the relocation related costs, which is really nice. To make it easier for the seller, the relocation company actually purchases the house from the seller directly and then resell the house to me. It probably relieved a lot of the seller's stress regarding moving and selling the house, but the relocation company also added a lot of paperwork and unnecessary processes during the sale. For example, the relocation company requires a termite inspection on the house and it wouldn't proceed unless the house has Section 1 clearance. Of course, this house had termite-damaged kitchen cabinets, so the relocation company had to have the cabinets removed before they could proceed with the sale. Due to the extra paperwork and rigid requirements, the purchase process actually was delayed. This was a very good deal though, because the house was in such distress, which I'm going to show you in the before walkthrough in just a second. I was able to secure the house at a very good price. The house is also in a lovely neighborhood, which you can kind of tell from the name of it, Rose Garden. And this was definitely the worst house on the block. So I was able to get the deal for 950,000, which is really cheap for that area. Before we dive into the before walkthrough, I want to give you a heads up on all the big ticket items that were on the list of our renovation. The HVAC system was so old and it needs a new roof and gutters, all new windows, and a new deck. As I mentioned, the house also had a weird addition that made the layout super funky, so we had to reimagine the entire living space and even mock it up on the computer to see what makes the most sense. If you are wondering how you can mock up a floor plan on the computer, check out this software called Home Designer. I have it linked below. The house also didn't have a master bedroom, so we had to create an ensuite when we changed the layout too. Now let's see what the house looked like before the remodel. We're ready to start on this project next week. The house is in San Jose, bordering Santa Clara. It hasn't been maintained for over 30 years and we have to replace the roof, all the windows and the HVAC system and much more. I'll take you inside of the house to show you how messy the layout is due to an addition being added on. We have to move quite a few walls to improve the functionality. The house has four bedroom, two bath, almost 1700 square feet and about 600 square feet was added on later. It was built in 1949, so it's over 70 years old. The house has original wood-framed single-pane windows, and the paint is peeling off. The sellers already moved out of the house, but they left a lot of furniture and personal items behind, so you can hardly tell that no one's living here anymore. The living room is of good size, but the carpet is so old and filthy. The couches that the sellers left are scratched up so bad by their pets, 
and I joke that I've seen couches left on the street in much better condition. This weird corner in the living room is really awkward. This den is not very functional. It's interesting how many people choose to leave their pianos with the house, and I've had at least four to five pianos left to me so far. From the narrow doorway off of the den, you go into the kitchen. It's not common for houses of this age to have such a big kitchen, but half of the space was added as part of the addition. Even though it's spacious, the kitchen is very dated, and it's closed off. The countertops are removed due to termite infection. Check out this cabinet that's installed at an angle. Until this day, I can't figure out why it's done this way. The cellars left such a mess, but this nightstand is kind of like a mobile island, and it inspired me to put in a real island here. We're going to remove the old light fixtures and put in many recess lights, and also get rid of the linoleum floors. We're going to do a lot of work in this kitchen. We'll close up that doorway, open up this wall, put a new island in the center to create an open concept between the kitchen and the living room. This is another room that was added as part of the addition. It's super narrow and long, and it looks very different from the rest of the house because of the wood paneling, the dark paint, and the exposed beams. By removing the wall between this room and the kitchen, this space can be of better use. Currently, there's no master bedroom in this house, so we're creating one by connecting this bedroom with the bathroom here, and we're going to change the layout here a little bit to make the bedroom and the laundry room more functional. This is the room that we're converting to a master bedroom. It was part of the addition as well, as you can tell from the exposed beams. The green carpet is extremely gross. As I mentioned, right next to the future master bedroom, there's stacked laundry. Then you go into this tiny and awkward bathroom that we're going to convert to the master bathroom. It's so awkward that we have a hard time showing it to you. After rearranging everything in the bathroom, hopefully we'll make it less awkward and more functional. The guest bathroom is so dim and has an awkward layout too, and we also have to relocate everything. This bedroom is so colorful, mint walls with purple accents. Needless to say that we'll have to repaint and put in a new closet. Here is a walkthrough of the house to give you a sense of how terrible the existing layout is and how poor the condition of the house is. Sometimes I feel so amazed by how some people live. We really have a ton of work to do here. Now on to the backyard. There's a big hole in the side fence, and I guess that's how you access the backyard now. It's a generous backyard, but it hasn't been taken care of, and it's all weeds. Good thing that the back fences are new and in good condition. Fences are expensive too. This is the back view of the detached garage and the house. You can see that the addition in the back has a flat roof. It's so weird to have three sliders all next to each other, and the deck was ripped off due to termite. 
so we'll have to install a new deck. When I first saw this house, my contractor happened to be on vacation, so I had to come up with the rehab cost myself. So with all the experience I've had, I decided that I think this house is going to cost $150,000 to fix up. It turned out that the renovation cost $160,000, so I was only $10,000 off. I think I did pretty good. And the renovation was actually very fast. It only took us two months to completely transform this home. After a few weeks of renovation, we moved a few walls and opened up the entire living space. The kitchen is down to the studs, and we're working on the electrical and plumbing. The master bedroom is framed and created. We also framed a new walk-in closet and access to the master bath. The guest bathroom is completely gut and rearranged. The closets in the rooms are reframed too. In the last stretch of the renovation, the hardwood floors are sanded and refinished. Kitchen backsplash is installed. I love how clean and versatile the marble hexagon tiles look. Fresh sod is installed in the backyard, and the green makes a huge difference. Right before the renovation was completed, I also chipped in by installing cabinet handles and putting shelves in. Let's see what the house looks like after the remodel. I'm super proud of the transformation we did on this project because we were able to completely reimagine the living room floor plan and made it all open and functional. We were also able to create a new master bedroom and updated all the infrastructure of the house. This is the project we just completed. After a short two months, we completely transformed this home. Let's go take a look inside. Come on in. Welcome to our newly finished project in San Jose. We put in a lot of recessed lights in this living space to make it bright and inviting. We also refinished this fireplace by painting the bricks and the molding to different colors. So the fireplace looks nice and new, but we didn't actually have to spend a lot of money. We created this great room by opening up the kitchen space. In the kitchen, we installed this new island as the center of entertainment. The two-toned cabinets also make the kitchen more interesting. We use this marble-like quartz countertops to elevate the entire look. And my favorite part of the kitchen is this marble hexagon backsplash. It looks so clean and pretty. Let's check out the master bedroom. So when I first purchased the home, there was actually no master, but we were able to work on the layout and added this bathroom to make this an ensuite. So this is the master bathroom that we used really nice marble tiles and also some really cool floors. From this new kitchen, you can easily access the backyard. We put in this new deck for people to enjoy this outdoor space. And there is also this new lawn that makes it really nice. Here's a walkthrough of the house. The flow is so much better than before, and I can even imagine living here myself. With how beautiful the house turned out, it's hard to believe that the sale process was actually rocky. It took us one month to get one offer, and the final sale price was a lot lower than I expected. I'm not exactly sure why the sale didn't go as well as planned, but I think two factors may have impacted it. The first thing is, the addition part of the house was added on later and it has a flat roof. In general, flat roof is not very popular among the buyers. 
and also the house has a detached garage and that's not very convenient for the buyers either. Let's look at the final numbers. The final sale price was 1.325 and the rehab cost was 160,000 which was one of the most expensive flips I've ever done. The total hold time from close of purchase to the close of sale was 4 months and the total profit was 110,000 which is a 9% return on investment. The return was a little lower than my average return in 2019 and this was also the only sale that was below my expectation in 2019. This shows us that when you purchase a flip, you really need to pay attention to all the features of the house, especially the undesirable features. They could really impact your final sale price. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Come on in. Welcome to our newly finished project in downtown San Jose. It's not in downtown San Jose. I love what I'm saying. From this new kitchen, you can easily access the new outdoor space. See?